common denominator here. We're using the LCD to eliminate denominators altogether. That's the plan. So let's go ahead and do that here. The first step that you should have done is, of course, make everything into a fraction. So we need to see x over 1 minus 3 fourths equals 1 20. Did you all do the first step? Yeah. Okay. The next step is to find the LCD. The LCD must contain all three of your denominators. So this one, this one, and that one. What is your LCD here? 20. Good. LCD is 20. Now here's what I'm talking about. The next step is crucial. All right, the LCD, everyone's going to be able to get the LCD. You guys are really good at that. The next step is you've got to nail this. What we're doing, instead of doing something like finding 20 over 20, we're not multiplying by 1 anymore. What we're doing is we're multiplying both sides by the same number. If you multiply both sides, what that comes down to is you're multiplying this fraction and this fraction and this fraction all by 20. That's what you're really doing, multiplying every single term by that number. If you have questions now, now's the time. Yeah. Yes. I am going to. Yeah. Now, I just want to be clear that what we're doing right now is we're actually multiplying by the number 20, not 20 over 20, 20. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. The reason why we can do that is because this thing is an equation. And some of you might be wondering, why haven't we done this the whole time with fractions? Well, it's a special case. We have equations now. Equations let us multiply both sides by the same number. That means multiply this side by 20 here, multiply that side by 20, and it's still an equal equation. If we didn't have an equation, could we do this? If we did not have an equation, could we do this? No. no. The only thing you can do in that case is find a common denominator. I don't want to do that. I want to get rid of denominators. Now, the next thing we're doing, of course, well, we get 20 times a fraction, and 20 times a fraction, and 20 times a fraction. What we do is we change those 20s into fractions themselves. That way we can multiply fractions together. So the only extra step here that we've got is just put that over 1. 20 is the same thing as 20 over 1. And here, and here. Are you okay with that so far? Yeah. Next thing you get to do, this is the best part, okay? The best part is you get to cross stuff out. You get to use that, ignore all this. You get to use the multiplication of fractions that we learned. You get to use the multiplication of fractions that we learned. And here as well, if you can, to cross out those numbers that you don't need. To cross out and simplify those fractions. Now, that, here's the whole cool thing about this, is that once you've done this step, you should have no more fractions. It has to work that way. You see, when you find an LCD, what you're doing is you're finding a number that has every denominator as a factor. What that means is every denominator must go into that number. What that means is that if I multiply it, it will for sure cross out every single time. And that's kind of nice because that eliminates your fractions every time. In short words, if you do this and you still have a fraction, you've made a mistake. That's, that's the idea. If you do this and you have a fraction still, you've made a mistake. Okay, so tell me, what am I going to get on this side of my equation? One. Yeah, not zero, right? Everything crosses out, but I have ones, so I get the number one. How about this? Does anything cross out over here? No. So tell me what I get. Oh, yes. yes. Beautiful. Love it. Then I have a minus sign, and does anything cross out here? 24. It has to, yeah, because four is a factor of 20 by necessity. That's what the LCD means. Four goes into four once and into 25 times, so we're going to get minus how much? 15. Perfect. Raise your hand if you made it that far. Good deal. Now we get to solve it. It's a lot easier to solve. We're not having to find any common denominators or do any work with fractions. We're going to what now? Perfect. We get 20x equals 16. Divide by 20. What do you think? Yeah, you got to reduce it. What goes into both numbers? That's your answer. Do you like the not having to deal with fractions here? Wait, how did you get four Reduce. So if if we do this, can't does this again? Does this work if you don't have an equation? No. 
So if you don't see that equal sign, can you do this? No. But as soon as you see the equal sign, go, game on. Go for it. Fifth y equals 2. I need you to know something about fractions with variables. Anytime that you see a fraction next to a variable like this, where it means 1 fifth times y, where you have that, it's okay to do one little step that will help you out every time. If you ever have like a 1 fifth y, what you can do is you can always take that variable and put it on the top of your fraction. So for instance, 1 fifth y is the same thing as y over 5. 1 y over 5. That's appropriate. If you had 3 sevenths x, how else could you write that? 3 x over 7. 3 x over 7 would be great. Yes. The reason why this works, if you want to, if you want to know the reason why, you agree that this means 3 sevenths times x, right? Yes. Well, if it means 3 sevenths times x, it means 3 sevenths times x over 1. You multiply those fractions straight across, you get 3x over 7. That's why we can do this every time. Are you clear on that? Yes. Okay, good. So in our example, instead of dealing with y, oh sorry, 1 fifth y, let's talk about y over 5 equals 2. Actually, you, you've already dealt with that problem before. How do you get rid of something divided by 5? You could. You multiply both sides by 5. Now, will this process still work? Sure, sure. If you want to check this out, I could write 2 as 2 over 1. Agreed? Mm -hmm. I could find my LCD. And here's, here's where you're going to see that this is going to actually work. What's your LCD? 5. You'd multiply both sides by 5, right? Yeah. So this would be times 5, times 5. Of course, we mean 5 over 1. But what's going to happen? Look, isn't this exactly what we did before? Multiply both sides by 5. It just happens to be the LCD in this case. 5s are gone. How much do you get? 1. Equals 5 equals 10. That's something we can also do. We'll do a couple more together. I'll give you three to do on your own, and we'll start moving on. Okay, 5 sevenths m equals 25. Can you tell me the first thing you might want to do with this problem? Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's make this into one fraction. You see right now the 5 sevenths m could be a little difficult to deal with. So I'm going to translate that to 5m over 7. You can take the variable, put it on the top of your fraction, and that's appropriate. Equals 25. Now, I do got to tell you, there are other ways that you can do these problems. I'm just giving you one way. Uh, some people like to multiply by the reciprocal here, and that works as well. Uh, this way I'm giving you is universal, though. It's going to especially be useful in the latter type of problems I'm going to give you today. So using our method, we'd, of course, change that into 25 over 1. Can you tell me what is your LCD when you're looking at these two fractions? Seven. Seven. So LCD is 7. Okay. And what this says to do is you're going to take that 7, you're going to multiply both sides by 7. What we do when we multiply both sides by 7 is we find a number that's going to eliminate our fractions for us. So on the left-hand side, notice, do the 7's cross out? Yeah, they have to. And we get 5m 
on the right hand side, how much are we going to get with 25 over 1 times 7 over 1? What's that give you? So if it's 175 over 1, I'm just going to leave it 175. Hey, can you do that problem? Sure, sure. What do you have to do to solve that problem? It's 5 by 5. If you divide 175 by 5, you are going to get 35. Bless you. Welcome. Yep, 35. We'll do one more together, and I'll give you a few to do on your own. Let's try negative 7 tenths x equals 2 fifths. Yeah, this one. But I'd like your help on the steps. I want you guys to kind of verbalize what we're supposed to do in this case. What's the first thing that we're supposed to do in this case? Put the negative and the variable on the top. Very good. So instead of having negative 7 tenths x, I'm going to have, can you read it to me? What am I going to have? We automatically have two fractions. What's the next thing you might want to do here? LCD. Great. Let's find the LCD. Ten. How much is the LCD? Ten. Ten. OK, that wasn't too bad. OK, what do you do with the LCD? Ten. 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 So that's here and here. Are we doing 10 over 1 or 10 over 10? Which one? 10 over 1. Good. We're actually multiplying by 10. It just happens that we're doing it on both sides, keeping that equation equal. Can you tell me what's going to happen on the left hand fraction? What do we cross out? 10. What are we left with? 10. Don't lose your negative. On the right hand side, do we cross anything out? Yeah. Yes. 5 and 10. 5 goes into 5 once, into 10 twice. How much are we going to get over there? Four. 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 Are we done? No. Oh, but we're close. Negative seven? Yes. Negative seven. No. Why not? Oh, we got the same thing. Yeah. You've got to have exactly the same thing, including that sign. So if we, if we divide by seven, I want you to notice something. If we divide by seven, you're going to get negative x. I don't want negative x. I want x. So to get rid of both the 7 and the negative, you divide by exactly what is there. This is going to give you x. This is going to give you negative 4 sevenths. Remember, it does not matter where that negative goes. Bottom, out front, on the top, doesn't matter. You have negative 4 sevenths on that example. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Good deal. Why don't you try three of these on your own. Work through them. Very similar to these examples. We'll start building up on this stuff in a little bit.